You're listening to Praying with Power and Purpose with Zari Banks. Shalom, 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 loved ones. This is Z. Welcome to another episode of Praying with Power and Purpose. It is Wednesday, August 9th, 2023. Praise the Lord. The month of Av is almost over. If you didn't know, the month of Av is the month that the Israelites should have entered into the promised land, the 9th of Av, which was back on July 26th, my birthday. But they didn't. They fell into fear. They disobeyed the Lord. They didn't believe all of that stuff was going on. And so they didn't enter into their promised land. But you need to understand that you can be entering into your promised land during this time of year, any year, right? Because you are in Christ, your new creation, and all of that doubt and stuff from back then doesn't apply to you. You're no longer under the curse. If you did, you know, mess up or anything with the Lord, not moving forward, not trusting him, not believing him, trying to make things happen on your own, all you have to do is repent. Let the blood of Jesus cover those things. Demand for a a crop failure for what you sowed so that you don't end up with any negative consequences. And then you move forward walking into your full promised land with the Lord. That's what you should be doing. If you haven't been walking into your promised land, so just right now repent and say, Father, I'm sorry for trying to live life on my own and not live, fulfill my divine destiny. I'm ready to walk into my destiny. Give me the next step and I will take it. And your next step is probably going to be uh, fearful, especially if you haven't been living with the Lord as your guide for any amount of time. But you need to move forward and take that step into your promised land because it's going to be better for you. There's nothing that you have going on that you have put together yourself in this life that compares to the divine destiny that Abba has for you. That's what you need to be seeking after. That's what you need to be focusing on. That's what you need to be looking for. And he'll take care of everything else. I love how Dr. Um, Charles Stanley used to say all the time, obey God and let the consequences and leave the consequences to him. So he's letting you know that the consequences, you know, the decisions, the fallout, the, the repercussions, the results of whatever you do honoring God are always going to be for your benefit because he doesn't do anything that's for your harm. You know, everything he does is for your good and you just have to be wise enough and, and savvy enough to pick up on that and move forward in it. But don't uh, live life not living the very best that he has for you. And in order to get the very best he has for you, you actually have to do things his way and be honoring him, listening to him, following his instructions, participating in his invitations, all of that good stuff, right? But it's worth it. I'm telling you, it's worth it. I'm living the dream because I'm actually doing things the Lord told me to do, invited me to do actually, because, you know, he doesn't tell you to do anything until you get to a certain place in relationship. Like in the, you know, and even still, you still have free will. You have the choice, but some people have decided I'm going to do whatever the Lord invites me to do. And then when you're doing it that way, it's kind of like, it's your, you know how some, after a little while, your parents aren't like, can you please do this? They're just like, go take out the trash. It's like that type of situation. So it's not that he's necessarily commanding or demanding that you do something. He's telling you to do it that way because you have developed that type of relationship and it's okay. You know, there are times when you're just developing the intimate relationship with the Godhead, they come to you and they're real nice and they're real sweet. And they're like, we'd love it if you would a, B and C, you know, letting you know that you absolutely have the choice. You don't have to do this. This is something that we would like to participate in with you. But after, you know, you've been moving with them for a few years and stuff like that, and they see that you're committed and and that you do what needs to be done, then they're just like, okay, go do this now and go do that now and go do this. But it's not like, you know, it's can't be like, well, the Lord told me to do this. It's always an invitation. You always have a choice, but he doesn't mind if you put the blame on him. Like I've done that before. So I, back, there were some times when I had some um, free airline passes and somebody wanted one and I was going to give it, but then the Lord was like, don't do that. And so I held off. And then they kept asking me like, what is going on? What is going on? What is going on? And I didn't tell everybody who was asking me what was going on. I just, you know, I told a couple of people, the Lord told me no. And he didn't tell me why, but he must've had a reason if he said, don't do that. Right. And I've done enough stupid stuff and ignored him enough times in my life to know that when he says, don't do something it's wise for you not to do it. 
right? He's trying to save you from something that could have gone on. And, you know, the person who was asking for it, I mean, if just being honest here, they are an alcoholic and you never know what kind of mess they could have been doing, you know, acting a fool with and stuff like that. So that was for my protection and I'm willing to be protected anytime he wants to offer it, even if it does make some other people mad, right? But that's just how it has to be. You know, uh, when it comes down to paying bills and stuff like that, nobody has my back other than him. So he's where it's at. He's the one who gets the priority. All right. All right. So today, y'all. Uh, oh, speaking of doing things that uh, the Lord invites you to do or tells you to do, however you want to say it. When I was at the um, Southwest Believers Conference this past week in Fort Worth, Texas, um, like last year when I came back from the conference, I was in that faith environment, right, for like six days. And then I came back to Arizona and I was like, oh, my God, I have not been working my faith to the level of its potential and I need to stop that. So I went all in, you know, leveling up my faith for 10 weeks. It took me, I spent a lot of time over a 10 week period just really seeking the Lord and leveling up, moving up to my next level. And it was really exciting. I came out on fire, of course, because that's how it is when you spend time with the Lord. And then this year at the conference, I was, you know, didn't know what was going to happen afterwards. But what was impressed upon me within the first couple of days of the conference is, okay, so now you know how to work your faith to get everything you want. Then you need to start doing the things that the Lord has invited you to do, even though they require, you know, more money than you look like you have right now and all of this stuff and the resources that you have and all of that. So I made the commitment during that conference that when I get back, I'm going to start putting into, into place the projects and the things that the Lord has invited me to do, because this is the thing, you know, sometimes the Lord will speak to you and he'll give you, you know, stuff that you're supposed to be doing years out and stuff like that. And so with some of the things on this list that the Lord has invited me to do, I have been like, oh, well, they're out, you know, years further down. The ministry will do that, you know, years from now and stuff like that. But there are things that I could actually implement right now. There's no reason for me to not do them right now, other than the fact that technically, you know, any money that I would need to do them is not physically in my hands. But I know well enough how the Lord works that is if I start moving out in faith and building the stuff that he's told me to build, then I will uh, heal Give me the provision that I need for it. And I want you to understand that as well. Let's say the Lord has told you to open a a shelter for single moms, right? And you're like, oh, I don't have any money for that. Just get started. Get started. Do something that will put that into practice, put that into place. Even if it's just you going out and walking land to see if that's the one he speaks to you and says, yes, this is the place you're going to have it or looking at buildings and things like that, but do something, put it in, you know, start implementing. And then once you do that, you'll notice that the money will, will come because that's how he does. He wants to know that you're actually going to move out in faith before he drops all the money on you. A lot of times, because you know how people are, they say, Oh, when I, if I had money, I would do this. You're lying. If you're not doing it now, if you're not doing it now, money is not an excuse because you put your money where your mouth is, right? That's why the Lord said, where your treasure is, your heart will be also. If you actually wanted to do something for God, you'd be doing it, whether you have little or whether you have a lot, you know, money is not a proper excuse for you saying, oh, well, that's why I'm not doing this for the Lord with the Lord. That's the big old lie, especially because with money is like the easiest thing to pull out of heaven. Money is so easy to pull out of heaven. I've been pulling money out of heaven for years now. What year is it? 2023? I've been pulling money out of heaven since 2011. That's a long time. Money is so easy to make. You know why? Because all you got to do is sow seed and you can bring money from one hand in the earth to yours. It's really, really easy to do. Very, very easy. So not having money, that's like the one of the lowest, weakest, most pathetic excuses that you could ever come up with to not be doing something for the Lord, Right. And especially like as far as giving is concerned, you know, believers always try to use that excuse. Oh, if I had it, I would give it. Well, why don't you get in the habit of giving it now so that all of a sudden you look up one day and then there it is. Right. Second Corinthians nine ten, my favorites. 
And I tested the Lord on this. And there's a blog from 2019 on um, the prophecy portion of 1123.life where I show you how I tested that promise. It says that he multiplies your seed for sowing. So if you actually wanted to give, he'll make sure you have every seed that you want. Right? So if you're trying to say, oh, I want to give more. I just don't have it. You're lying. That's why you don't have it. You are literally lying because the word says that he multiplies seed for sowing. And I have tested this, documented it and tested it. Right? Over a a one month period, 30 days, I started out with $2 and kept asking the Lord to multiply it so that I could give, not so that I could pay bills, not so that I could go on a vacation, but specifically my seed for sowing, multiply the seed so that I can sow it again. And I ended up $2 turned into $128 in like a 32 day period. Right? So if you want to give consistently, regularly, and decent sized seeds to some ministry and you're saying that you can't afford it, I'm telling you right now you're lying because I've done it before. I've tested the Lord with Second Corinthians 9 and 10. He multiplies your seed for sowing and your bread to eating. All right? And I can tell you, he multiplies my bread for eating too because I'm constantly eating. Every time I turn around, I'm eating something. You know? So, uh, back to today's topic or just to start on today's topic. Wait, wait, before I get into today's topic, let me tell you some things that we have upcoming for, um, my business, Zari Banks Inc. And also for 1123 ministries, right? Okay. So one thing that's going on right now is we're still in the middle of the courts of heaven summer series. We still have August and September to go and we're doing well, um, securing land and home buying and paying off mortgages and all that stuff through the courts of heaven is really fantastic. You should have joined, but if you didn't, the next time I teach these courses, you can get in there. All right. So that's still going on. The father's payroll is going on the first and third Tuesday of each month, except that in this latter part of the year, I have a lot of stuff going on. So I believe we're only meeting one time a month from now until November. And then I don't work in December, so we won't be meeting in December, but we'll pick up again in January. So 1123 Ministries has an online conference. Of course, it's free. We don't charge any money for conferences. Um, It is Supernatural You 5784, where we give you the word of the Lord for the upcoming year. And this year is pay dollar. Dollar is a door, pay is a mouth. So this is telling you, this is something the Lord has already been speaking this since June, that we're supposed to use our words as a portal to to bring things from heaven into earth. So this year, pay dollar, mouth, door, is a year for you to use your words to open heavenly portals, portals between earth and heaven so that you can receive the things that you desire. That is going to be some good word for you. You definitely want to be there. You don't want to miss that conference and make sure you get your seed ready so you can sow into the prophetic words that are released. All right. And remember, your seeds don't have to be big, right? Remember, I got out of homelessness sowing pocket change. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. I'm telling you, you can do it. Excuse me, I got a little bit of um, sinus thing going on, so I'm drinking some honey, cinnamon, olive oil, and lemon water. It's really good. It cleans out your sinuses and helps you get healthy. There's also, cinnamon has a lot of good health stuff in it, and a lot of those uh, tinctures that you can drink for health have cinnamon in them. I don't like the taste of cinnamon, really. Depends on, you know, unless it's full of sugar, like a cinnamon roll, but it is good for health. Good for health, good for health, good for health. All right, so... Back to what's going on. So we have the Father's Payroll. We have the Courts of Heaven Summer Series is still in the works. We have, I'm not in the works, it's still in progress. We have um, ordination is now open. If you would like to be ordained through 1123 Ministries, you can do that. There is a fee for that, $250, because we are connecting you, covenanting with you in 1123 Ministries. And in order to, um, you know, have our name and your backing and that little badge and all that good stuff that you get with that ordination. We want to know that you are trustworthy and that you're committed and that you understand covenant. And Psalm 55 tells you that covenant is enacted by sacrifice. So your $250 enrollment fee is for your, is for your covenant. It's, it's for your sacrifice and you should be happy. These covenants aren't cut like they were in the old Testament or or even in, you know, some uh, African nations still where you have to, cut a portion of your body 
and put your blood together before you're in covenant. We just ask for a seed. But we all know those seeds hurt some people. So it is a sacrifice. I understand that. I get it. And I'm just messing around. I'm not trying to, you know, criticize you or anything like that. So ordination, the father's payroll, courts of heaven, summer series, um, supernatural U 5783, Saturday, October 21st, 10 a.m. Arizona time, 10 a.m. Yeah. Arizona time. And it's online and it's free. And, um, what else in January, we are having, um, the East coast partners meeting. It's going to be in North Carolina. It looks like Greensboro or somewhere in that area. And, uh, so if you're over on the East coast and you haven't made it to my money grows on trees conference in April, um, you can see us over there in January, the last weekend in January, it's like the 20 something like 25th, 24th, 26, 27, something like that. It's like Friday and Saturday. And of course there's no charge for that. You just need to meet us there and get into that environment, pick up that anointing and just get blessed. You know, I'm going to have some goodies for you cause I love to give. So definitely come to that and be watching out for the information. Let's see what else, what else, what else? Oh, in December, we do have the Tucson, the local Christmas gathering and, um, I'm putting a bowling evening for us together for us. So that'll be a lot of fun. Last year we went to ax throwing and it was fun. And then of course my money grows on trees, revelation and wealth. Sowing into revelation and wealth conference is April, the last weekend in April in Tucson, Arizona. And then in July of 2024, we're having the West coast partners meeting and that will be in Washington state. So be watching out for those things. We still want you to come to my money grows on trees in April in Tucson you can come to that and the, you know, the regional partner meetings, but come and make sure you can try to connect with us at least once a year and you can do it. You know, very well that you can sew your way into a hotel and a plane ticket or even, you know, gas for driving and a, or a car for driving, whatever it is that you need. If you don't understand by being connected to us after all this time that you can sew for anything that you want, I don't know how much more I can help you. I just did a video yesterday an update the ministry update for the month of august and i was showing you how i sold two um starbucks cups and i bought two of them so i paid for four but i have nine in my possession currently because i reap what i sow right giving away two starbucks mugs and then i end up receiving seven mugs that doesn't make any sense right but that's how it is sowing and reaping you reap what you sow and I'm reaping Starbucks cups. It's not like I collect them or anything like that. They're nice. You know, they're, some of them are, a couple of them are stainless steel, a couple of them are plastic, whatever. Some of them are glass, whatever. But I am literally harvesting because I've sown cups into other people for different things, different reasons. So you do reap what you sow. And if, that's what I'm trying to say. If you don't understand that you can get anything you want by sowing seed, I don't know what to tell you. And it's your own fault that you don't have what you desire. All right. Speaking of, go watch that video. It's on the YouTube channel. It's called In the Loop, episode two, because it's for August 2023. And it's sending out a ministry email because I was looking at that. And a lot of people are just not opening those emails. So I'm not even going to waste my time writing them because it takes me a while to write that stuff. But it's easier to just sit down, make some notes, sit down and share with you over a video what's going on. And so that video is on the YouTube channel, Zari Banks, Inc. It's also on my BitChute channel and on my Rumble channel. You can go check that out. And find out all the details of the things that are going on in the ministry. And get that lesson on reaping what you sow. And get to see all of my crazy Starbucks mugs right there in front of me. I'm going to do another video and show you all the coach bags I have. Because I've sewn three coach bags and I've harvested a ton of them back. I told you, um, you know, there was this time last year that I was sewing coach bags. And for some reason, they were just showing up in the mail. Like things I hadn't even ordered. They were just showing up. I don't know what the deal was, but I got like four coach bags in the mail and it just didn't make any sense. They were just multiplying all over the place because I had given a couple of them away. All right. So this finally is what I want to talk to you about today. So I told you a couple of weeks ago that I was going to share with you this prophetic word that I was given. And it's not even really a prophetic word. This was actually an encounter. Somebody who was praying for me had, and they shared it with me. And this is from back in the end of June, 2023. All right. So they're praying for me and they said, I stepped into heaven and I saw Zari first standing in front of a glass building with glass doors. And as she stepped in front of the doors, they opened and I watched her walk up glass steps. She was dressed so beautifully. 
very glamorous like old Hollywood in an outfit that all matched white heels with open toes and black strips down each side and her toes were painted red she had matching hat bag and long skirt which was white and black and a jacket and a blouse all white and black with red earrings little pops of red I heard the Lord say she's famous here in heaven then I saw Zari again in this very fabulous outfit. This time it was a red flapper looking dress with sequins and heels and a headband with red feathers in it. She was dancing and having fun and I heard celebration. So listen to this. Um, if you listen to my podcast last year on my birthday, July 26th, I shared with you the encounter I had when I stepped into heaven. Because at midnight I like to step into heaven and give thanks to the Lord for the next year, you know, the new year. And to, um, you know ask him what he has for me for the year and also just give him a seed. I always sow a seed for whatever number of years I've been on this earth. So if I've been on this earth 40 years, I'm going to sell him a $40 seed and to covenant with him so that I live through the whole year and have a fantastic year. And if you don't do that, if you don't covenant with the Lord for each year, then I recommend that you do that because you, you want to be able to make it through that entire age. You don't want to be taken out or anything like that. And a covenant with the Lord specifically so that you make it through the year in health, and have a great year, you can do that very easily. You take care of that in the beginning. And I've shared this with you before. Prayer is front-loaded work. You pray constantly and consistently so that everything that would come up in your life is already taken care of. This is how Jesus lived. He did this every night. He went up to the mountain to pray. This is what he was doing. He was preparing for things that were to come. He wasn't praying about things that had already happened or things that could potentially happen, whatever. He was praying in advance. Prayer is front-loading work. That's why like people shouldn't be having emergencies and all that foolishness. You should know already. It should be downloaded out of your spirit what to do during an emergency because you've already been living your life in a life of prayer, a constant state of prayer, so that when things come up, you know, you just tune into Holy Spirit. He tells you exactly what to do. You make it through. There's no issue, no loss, no lack, none of that. All right? Everything works out just fine. So um, I went up to heaven, July 26, 2022, stepped in for my birthday. And when I stepped in, there was this big old party going on. There were two lines of people. I walked through the sitting room. There was all this confetti and balloons and all this stuff. Everybody's clapping and cheering like I was special. And it didn't make any sense to me that they were like, you know, that they were like, I, it was, seriously, it was like I was somebody famous. When I walked in there, it didn't make any sense to me. But then this year, a whole year later, when I'm getting this re- prayer report from someone, it makes sense that that's why they were all standing there and watching me and clapping like I was special and stuff like that and with the confetti and everything when I stepped in for my birthday celebration. So back to the report. Okay, so I um, it says, I stepped into heaven again and I saw the day Zari was born. I saw her little precious feet and her little cry. I saw the date, I believe it was July 16th or something. She wasn't sure. Um, I saw this party again in heaven and I heard the Lord say, before she drew her first breath on earth, all of heaven was cheering her on. I loved Zari so much that the day she was born, there was a huge celebration in heaven. All of heaven threw an amazing party. You are famous in heaven and everyone knows who you are and is cheering you on. Like Hollywood, every part of your life is followed and I adore watching you and all you do. So that was from the end of June. So like a month before my birthday this year that that report came to me. And so that is so special to me and so wonderful it explained a couple of different things to me so it explained why the big celebration happened when I went in for my birthday on July 26 2022 and it also explained something that I went to a conference in Virginia Beach Virginia in 2015 and Apostle Candace Ford she was um, kind of just standing in the front row because she was going to do the, the the teaching that night and we were just praying and worshiping and stuff or whatever but she was you know we were just sitting and I was in the back because I had come in a little bit later and um, she called up my name and she was saying stuff about, you know, in the womb and angels and blah, blah, blah and all this stuff. And it kind of just brought, you know, this word from this year brought all of that full circle and gave me some greater understanding of what she was talking about and the, you know, what she was seeing during that moment. So it was just really beautiful how the Lord does that. You know, people always like to say, well, there's some things you'll just never know till you get to heaven. Why? Why does it have to be that way? God never told me that, you know, he never, when I've asked him something, he's never been like, oh, I'll tell you when you get to heaven, right? That just seems so silly. But then it's because I know him pretty well, pretty intimately. And uh, he, he has a hard time telling me no for anything, you know? Every time I ask him for something, he's like, absolutely, you can have that. You know, even if he laughs first because it's something ridiculous that I'm asking for, he always gives it to me. And I want that for you as well. I want you to know him so well, so deeply 
that you have no trouble asking him for anything. I want you to be living the dream just like I'm living the dream because it's available for you. And remember, God is no respecter of persons. He says that. that that's the truth. Don't put any limits on what he can do for you, with you, you know, and through you. Take all of it, right? Take absolutely everything that he has available and live the very best life that you could possibly live. You know, it's so ridiculous that some Christians, they think that, you know, suffering and sickness and sadness and all that stuff is just a normal part of life. But that's life under the curse. That's life without Jesus. You have Jesus now, so you should be living the very best life there is to live. You should be the head and not the tail. That's what last episode was about, right? Like Bill Winston always says, you shouldn't be suffering the same things that people who don't know Jesus are suffering. So why are you like what in your mind is so screwed up that you think your dad wants you suffering? What parent who's in their right mind? Because, you know, there are some parents out there that are crazy. They've been raised crazy and they repeat crazy who try to think like, uh, you know, like I had a friend one time say, I'm glad I don't have any kids. I wouldn't buy my kids anything. Well, well, where did you get that from? You know, that was learned somewhere because I am a parent and I love to give my child everything that he asks for. Absolutely everything. I never tell him no. Never tell him no. But then I know what that's like because my dad never tells me no. God never tells me no. And when you love your kid and you you bless them and then not only that, if there's somebody who loves you back and honors you, then you really want to give him everything, right? That's how it is. My kid, he's honoring. He's respectful. He's a great young man. He loves the Lord. He reads his Bible. He prays. He fasts. You know, he trusts the Lord. He he is a huge giver. Huge giver. You know, handed me $200 cash for my birthday here last week, week before last. You know, 21 years old. Every time I'm buying something for my mom or my grandma, I was asking him, do you want to get in on this? And he says, yes. And he sews, right? There was even times a couple of years ago that I was sewing into my grandmother, giving her cash and he outdid me. Like I was given like $250, something like that. He gave 500, right? So when that kid asked me for anything, you better believe I'm going to get it for him, right? Even if it takes me a minute, even if it takes me a little bit of time, even if it looks like I'm going to be sacrificing to get it for him, he's getting it because he's such a great young man. Well, the thing is, is that I made it a point to have the Lord know me and love me and trust me enough so that he thinks I'm a great kid and I can get everything that I want. All right. And you may be saying, well, that's a real selfish type of relationship to have. But that's what God bragged about in the Bible. He said, have you considered my servant Job? Job pleased him. Right. He said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. I want him to be well pleased with me. Right. Look at Abraham. He was called a friend, not just a servant. Right. So you better believe that that's what I'm going for. I want that deep, intimate relationship. You should have that, too. You shouldn't be going through life without it. Your whole purpose for existence is for you to get to know the father well enough that he at least calls you a friend, if not calls you his favorite. Right. I'm called his favorite. I'm famous in all of heaven because of the relationship that he and I have together. Right. It has nothing to do with me. It's just that from the womb, he decreed that you and I were going to have a special relationship, but he's no respecter of persons. You can develop that. And for all you know, that was decreed over you when you were in the womb. You just may not have had a prophet explain that to you at some point. But you can go up to heaven and look and find out. That's why we do everything from heaven. We get everything we need from heaven, bring it into the earth. All right, loved ones, I bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you for sitting with me. I pray something here impacted you positively. Don't forget to check us out at 1123.life and stay tuned for a brief message. I'll be back with you next week. Remember, you have what you say, so call it how you want it. Hi, this is Zari. If you've enjoyed supping on the Word of God with me today, I invite you to partner with me in this kingdom work. Your partnership in this fertile soil gives you legal access to every anointing my ministry operates in. Multiply, because that's my decree for you. Thank you, and be exceedingly blessed in Jesus' name. Copyright 2023, Zari Banks, Inc.